you know what it's like. You're having a conversation en français and then you freeze. What's the word you need in order to finish the sentence? You're looking and looking, you know you know it. Or maybe you don't, but you weren't planning on having to say this particular word. The stress is creeping in fast. You're wasting the other person's time. Frustration is building. What are they going to think of my French? You ask yourself. So to make it all just stop, you switch to English. They respond in English. All is well. Calm returns. You mop the sweat from your brow and carry on having a lovely exchange. Shortly thereafter, or maybe a few hours, you feel guilty about switching to English. <laughs> Salut French learner, comment tu vas? J'espère que tu vas bien. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, je m'appelle Alex and every single week here in a new video, I help intermediate French learners become more confident French speakers. So if you even slightly recognized yourself in that intro, then this video is for you because I'm going to be talking about the one skill split up into three sub skills, if you like, of how to keep your conversations in French when you fear they might turn to English and never go back. Now you probably know if you've watched my videos before or if you've thought about this yourself that the only way to get better at speaking French is to speak French, right? So if only you could keep those conversations in French instead of you switching to English, instead of the other person switching to English, instead of everything going to English and uh, you not getting the practice in that you know you need to get. So how can you resolve that? Well, I've got one main tip, as I mentioned, to help you through this and it takes some work. It's simple, but that doesn't mean it's easy. It takes some time, takes some effort on your part to get it going. But once you commit this, commit to this and make it a habit, I assure you, you will be having many more conversations that stick in French than revert to English. Now, the first thing I want to say is sort of a preface to the main tip that I'm going to give you, uh, albeit is still very important. I want you to put yourself in that that version of yourself in one of these awkward situations and just just breathe try and stay calm just accept that this is completely normal you're learning a foreign language you're learning to speak a foreign language you're going to have many of these times if you haven't had them uh, already you're going to keep having many more of them depending on your level the challenge is just going to change but you're still going to have moments where you need to overcome these blockages so just try and just try and breathe. Remember that you have more time than you think. It's not the end of the world. If you take a few seconds to think of what to say, just take a breath and stay calm. So without any more preamble, the tip is you really need to be simplifying what you want to say. That's it. Just simplify what you want to say, except that you're going to be talking more like a baby, more like a child, uh, in a less articulate way than perhaps you can in English. And just once you accept that, you'll be using more simple terms without that internal battle going on to try and speak the best French possible. Accept that your 20, 30, 40 years of English just isn't going to compare with your one to five years of French. It just can't, right? You're going to have to speak more simply. Now, although the exact cause of the blockage in your French conversation is going to be subjective, I do have three main categories of words that you could be looking for um, when you're having that conversation, when you're having that blockage, when you're having that struggle in a real-time conversation um, to make it easier for you to find a solution for what you want to say. So without further ado, here is that list. Here is the first thing. And the first thing is um, when you can't think of a specific noun. And when you can't think of a specific noun in French, so that could be a person, a place, an inanimate object, you know, you name it, any sort of noun, you need to find a more general way of describing this thing or this person. Talk around it. Instead of trying to say, uh, 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 what is it? And then having the person reply to you in English, and then what is quite likely the conversation will carry on in English. You need to learn how to describe the thing or the person in French and then hopefully the other person will either just get who you're talking about or get what you're talking about or they'll be able to provide you with the word that you're missing and you then repeat it and then carry on with the conversation. So some uh, typical words that you can use in French um, when you're talking about a thing, a very generic thing 
right? Which we can use for a place or a person, but more often it's gonna be an inanimate object. There are three of them in French that they all love to use. There is le truc, la chose, et le machin. Le truc, la chose, et le machin. A machin looks a bit like machine, and in fact there's a feminine version which is la machine, but anyway. So think about it, it's the same in English, say the thing, you know, you're trying to rack your brain, trying to click your fingers. Um, so you do the same thing in French, use these words and then apply an adjective to it. Or try and describe, try and talk around it so the person gets you. Remember, the first goal of the conversation is to se faire comprendre, get your point across. So make sure they understand you. How can you do that? We well, are trying to think of um, that uh, that green thing that you saw uh, the other day, uh, le, le, le truc uh, vert uh, uh, qu'on a vu uh, l'autre jour, uh, c'était quoi? C'était quoi déjà? Uh, and he goes, ah, um, uh, le, le, la, le, la balle de tennis, la balle de tennis uh, qui, était, uh, qui était dans le jardin. Oh, oui, 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 le, la balle de tennis. And you couldn't remember it for whatever reason, but they got it because they were with you at that time, right? Very context specific, but that's an example of how you could do it. And you do that with le truc, la chose, ou le machin. Now, if you're not that, that stuck, and you, you're able to actually say, okay, maybe you can't think of someone's name, right? You can't think of a particular, um, uh, the, the job title of the person you're talking about. Perhaps you're talking about the, the um, uh, le contrôleur, in, on the tram or the bus who stops you and checks your ticket, you're telling a story. This is very specific, but I'm trying to say yours is going to be quite subjective. So I need to be quite particular with my examples. So you might be stuck with, you know, how do you talk about the man who comes onto the tram or the bus or the train and checks your ticket? Well, in French, it's called le contrôleur. And you could say, uh, j'étais dans le train et, um, uh, com comment il s'appelle? Um, L'homme ou la personne Qui, uh, qui regarde ou uh, qui vérifie uh, ou qui valide uh, les, les billets de train. And he goes, ah, ah, uh, un contrôleur. And you go, merci, un contrôleur, right? And in that, you've managed to talk around it, you managed to describe what you're talking about without switching to English. And when you stay in French, you maintain a high probability that the conversation is going to stay in French, okay? You can't control what the other person is going to say, but you can play the odds. And if you stay in French, they're going to stay in French. You can be more specific again. So perhaps, you know, you, you know more than la personne ou l'homme. Maybe uh, you're talking about someone in a film. You're going to be like uh, l'acteur, uh, l'acteur qui jouait dans ce film ou ce film ou ce film. And uh, they say, ah, then they give, give you the name of it. That would happen in English, right? You can't think of an actor's name. They just, you just say the actor who was in um, Top Gun or, you know, whatever. You'd be like, ah, Tom Cruise. Yeah, thank you, Tom Cruise. Uh, and then so it happens in English. And so this, this works with, you know, things, people, what about places, or places you use the word l'endroit or le lieu, like the standard term for place or area, you know, and the other person will help you find the name of the place, right? This is a general conversational skill regardless of the language, but you need these, these sort of keywords, these trigger words to fall back on. So even if you can't remember the specific or you've never learned the specific name of someone or something because you haven't had that conversation before, always have those base terms to fall back on. Now, another set of keywords which make it really easy to help you describe something is the word what. So in French, you have ce que, ce qui, ce dont. Okay, I'm not really going to talk about the complexities of these, but in different situations you can use ce que, ce qui, ou ce dont uh, to mean what. Um, so you can't remember the thing, but maybe you're talking about um, ce que j'ai mangé hier. Comment s'appelle déjà? Comment? Ce que j'ai mangé hier. And the other person knows what you had yesterday. And then they say, ah, um, uh, tu es allé au McDo, right? Ce que j'ai mangé. What I had. You know, you're not able to name the, you're not able to name what it was you, you, you ate, but you're able to say what and I ate, right? So the person then can help you. So you, again, you've talked around it. They filled in the gap. Conversation continues. So remember, don't beat yourself up because you can't figure this out, okay? This happens to you in English all the time because your mind can't simply conjure up anything when you snap your finger. It's pretty remarkable how quickly we recall words just like I'm doing now, but it can't do everything. We have blips, all right? So give yourself a break. And if you find yourself giving yourself a hard time, watch this video that I made a few weeks ago. So that was my tip for a noun. If you're stuck with describing something, a general 
something, situation, a person, place, an inanimate object. What if it's a verb you get blocked on? You're in the middle of a sentence and you want to use a particular verb. Well, sure, it's frustrating, I get it. You, you perhaps learned a verb and you can't recall it, or you got to a point in the conversation where you realize, oh, I didn't realize the conversation was gonna go on to this. How do I say this? Well, try your best to think of a simpler form of the verb or one that's related enough that will allow the conversation to uh, carry on. So an example where perhaps, I don't know, you could be sick of using one particular verb like ithi, ithi to try. I use it all the time. Sometimes I want to be a bit more, um, you know, alternative. Sometimes I want to mix things up and I might use something like um, tonte, tonte. Now it has a slightly different meaning, but I like to use it. Imagine that I'd forgotten tonte. Well, I can always fall back to ithi. Ithi. So this is a one good reason for learning a lot of these base verbs that cover all bases, you know. They have very general meanings. This is why you don't start something super complex. You start with the simplistic and move up to keep the conversation going. Pour se faire comprendre. If you can't think of recevoir, to receive, then why not use avoir? Avoir, because all French learners know avoir, because it's one of uh, the two most common verbs in the French language, avoir and être. So, je, je reçois uh, des courriers. You just can't think of je reçois, so you think of uh, j'ai des courriers. You know, it's close enough. You know, I have, I have letters. You know, that's a very short, basic situation, but you see what I mean. And the phrase, for example, je voudrais, which English speakers know for ordering stuff at cafes or restaurants, je voudrais, I would like. It's a polite way of saying I want, right? But it's not the end of the world if you can't remember je voudrais. You're going to say je veux, right? So imagine this on all sorts of scales. You're in a big debate with someone if you're at a bit of a higher level. You're going to get stuck, right? If you're at intermediate level, if you're at an advanced level, or you're at a more basic level, the challenge, the nature of the challenge is going to change because you know more, so you wanna push yourself to know a more articulate way of saying something, right? So if you haven't learned this one skill of being able to simplify and learning to talk around a topic and describe something, um, you're really gonna find yourself uh, um, constantly facing this problem, um, no matter what level you are in other parts of French. So this is a skill you can learn and apply it to whatever level of difficulty of the French language that you are using in your conversations. So to illustrate my point further about the importance of being able to simplify and, and being willing to simplify your speech in order to keep conversations in French rather than switching to English, let's have a look at a couple of uh, common examples. Perhaps you've forgotten how to use chez in French. You know, it's a very particular um, uh, French uh, way of saying someone's place, you know. You could be talking to someone and say, est-ce qu'on va chez toi? Est-ce qu'on va chez toi? But you can't think for the life of you how to say uh, your place, right? So you've got to pivot. You've got to be able to react in the situation, in the moment. So you say, est-ce qu'on va à ton appartement? Est-ce qu'on va à ton appartement? Because you've remembered how to say apartment or flat, right? And it follows a more uh, common structure that you've learned. Ton plus noun, right? Che is a bit more particular. And, you know, who knows, if you can't remember appartement because it's a bit more particulier, you go with est-ce qu'on va à ta maison? Est-ce qu'on va à ta maison? The person is going to understand. They're going to carry on the conversation, right? And probably they're not even going to bat an eyelid because it sounds so normal, right? Because there are also many ways of saying the same thing in every language. A second example would be if you can't remember how to say boyfriend or male friend of uh, of someone, right? So it's one way, the most common way in, in common everyday speech in French is copain, le copain de quelqu'un, right? So maybe you're saying, je parlais du copain de Marie. Je parlais du copain de Marie. But you can't remember the word copain, copain, right? But you want to get, get the point across that it was a male friend and it was, there was romance involved, right? So it's not just male friend, it's a boyfriend. Maybe you just go simple and you say, je parlais de l'ami de Marie. Je parlais de l'ami de Marie. And based on the context, based on how well the other person knows when you were talking about, they might instantly know that they mean, you mean the boyfriend. But on the face of it, l'ami, ami, doesn't necessarily mean boyfriend, right? So you could have to go one further. You say, je parlais de l'ami, le garçon, de Marie, right? And if the person who thinks the boy, the friend, the boy, and maybe thinking of boy, sometimes it could register, right? But might not always. 
then you then you, you go for it further and maybe you do some maybe you do some kissing gestures that's a silly but very real example of something you might have to do is to use other things other than words to get the point across okay and then you make a mental note to go and practice that word later or perhaps you don't but it comes up again and eventually you will get it it's not the most efficient way all the time but the point is in the moment keep the conversation in french you're only cheating yourself and losing yourself time wasting yourself wasting your own time by switching to english so do yourself a favor take the time to learn this simple but difficult skill of simplifying what you want to say it's difficult because it takes a level of uh, acceptance which a lot of us find difficult as adults to simplify how we speak um, but also it's not easy because it takes time all right but the quicker you can get to that acceptance the quicker you're going to be able to use it comfortably and feel okay with doing it um, and therefore uh, see your conversations become more fluid and in french if you feel like you understood this tip but you're really wondering how you can employ it or you've tried to do it but it hasn't stuck what what else can you do then i would love for you to contact me i am a french coach helping english speakers improve their spoken french all aspects of french but particularly to become more confident french speakers this is something i can really help you with so if you would like to get in touch with me via any of my social media platforms or by email. The links will be down in the description below and I would love to talk to you about your current situation, how I can help you improve. But that's today's video for you, everyone. Merci beaucoup d'avoir regardé. If you enjoyed it, do leave a like down below. It really helps me get the videos out in front of more French learners like yourself. Subscribe to the channel if you're new here and you enjoyed the video. I assume you did if you're still watching. But apart from that, merci beaucoup and uh, I will see you in the next one. À la prochaine. Ciao.